Who Ate Marula's Fruit? by Papa Stash, the old African storyteller. Long, long, long before your great-great-great-grandmothers could remember, there grew a beautiful marula tree. The animals of the savanna loved that tree. It gave them much-needed shade from the hot African sun, but it never gave them any fruit. One animal in particular, porcupine, spent all of his days sleeping under the tree. Other animals came and went, but they never dared to wake the sleeping porcupine. One spring morning, two tiny red blossoms appeared. Hare was first to see them, and she knew that one day they would become her juicy marulas. In the early afternoon, Warthog saw the blossoms, and he knew that one day they would become his sweet marulas. In the late afternoon, Kudo came to rest under the tree. When he saw the blossoms, he knew that one day they would become his delicious marulas. Everyone saw those first blossoms on their marula tree. Well, everyone except Porcupine. When he woke up, it was dark. All spring, the two little tiny red blossoms grew and grew and grew into two tiny marulas. All summer, the tiny marulas got bigger and bigger and bigger until they were ready to drop off and be eaten. All summer long, Kudo, Warthog, and Hare watched the marulas grow, waiting for them to fall to the ground. Each wanted to get to the marula fruit first. Suddenly, the sky filled with dark clouds. The animals knew a lightning storm was coming and being near the marula tree was dangerous, so they ran away. The wind blew so strong and the thunder was so loud that it woke the sleeping porcupine, and he hurried home as fast as he could. And we all know porcupines rarely ever hurry. When the storm ended, Hare, Kudu, and Warthog raced back to their tree, only to discover that the marula's fruit was gone. Hare noticed footprints in the mud, and being the wisest of the three, suggested they follow them. And they did, right to Porcupine's den. Now they had a problem. One of them had to go inside and bring Porcupine out. Kudo said he could not go because his antlers were too big to fit, and besides, Kudos never go underground. Hare said she was afraid a snake might be hiding inside, and she might be caught and eaten. Warthog said he was afraid and refused to go inside, period. You'll have to wait for another story to find out why. All their loud arguing woke the sleeping porcupine, and when he came out of his den, they saw their fruit. Hare asked them why he took her juicy marula. Kudo asked him why he took his delicious marula. Warthog asked him why he took his sweet marula. Juicy, delicious, Sweet? What? Porcupine had no idea what they were talking about. Hare, being the wisest, told Porcupine to go and look at his reflection in a nearby puddle. Porcupine went to the puddle, looked at his reflection, smiled, and then returned to the others. He told them they were correct. He did have the marulas, but he did not take the fruit. He pointed out to them that the marulas must have fallen during the storm and stuck to his quills. Therefore, they were his marulas now. The others became very upset and began arguing with him. Porcupine listened for a short while, and we had heard enough. He simply told them that he would decide what to do with the fruit, and if they wanted to hear his decision, he would meet them later at the marula tree. Then he turned and went back inside his den. Porcupine never had a problem like he had now, and he knew it too. He wanted to be fair, but how could he be fair? Each of them said it was their fruit. And another thing, Porcupine would never have known that he even had the fruit if they had not told him. But there were only two marulas. What was he to do? He thought that he thought, and then an idea came to him. He cut the two marulas in half. He gave Hare a half, 
Kudo a half, Warthog a half, and Cap a half for himself. Everybody was happy because they each had a half, and half a marula was better than no marula at all. So remember, my young friends, sometimes good things come to those who least expect it. And if something good comes to you, be fair and share, and show that you care. And there ends my story. And one more thing. Please share my rose fruit with your friends. Asante. I hope you enjoyed my story. And please share Who Ate Marula's Fruit with your family and friends. You can find more of my stories on Facebook at The Storyteller or on YouTube at Papa Stash.